Hey everybody, welcome back to the Welch Review. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the 2013 remake of The Evil Dead. So, run it down, who do we got? Uh, so, The Evil Dead 2013 stars Jane Levy, Shiloh Fernandez, Jessica Lucas, Lou Taylor Pucci, Elizabeth Blackmore, Phoenix Connolly, and Bob Dorian. Uh, and it's produced by the original three uh, producers of the OG film by Sam Raimi. Uh, it's produced by Sam Raimi himself, Bruce Campbell, and Rob Tapper. And it's written, sorry, written and directed by uh, Fidi Alvarez. And a uh, fun fact before we hop in, Bruce Campbell was very adamant about not wanting this film to be remade, although Sam Raimi was because he thought, you know, the special effects, it could totally reach a new generation of uh, deadites, right, to in today's day and age. However, when they... Uh, said they weren't going to revamp the Ash character, Bruce Campbell was uh, more willing to be like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Yeah, so... Um, so that's it, who's in it. Yeah, in this movie, our hero is a female, and I want to... Okay, never mind. Her name's Mia. Alright, yeah, I wasn't going to do the name because oh, it's bad. kind of a twist. Oh, okay. Yeah, you run the twist. <laughs> Alright, so uh, big spoilers, the main character's name is Mia. She, uh, she plays the sister character. Uh, who, I mean, I don't think it's the same name, but no. originally in the first Evil Dead, Ash went to this cabin with his sister, uh, and some friends, and, and his, his girlfriend. girlfriend. So, in this one, uh, it's the sister instead of Ash who becomes, uh, the Hefe, or the hero for the to defeat the evil, right? Uh, who will thwart the dead But it's also, like, a totally different thing. They went up there to party, flew around, you know, reminisce, have good. This time, they're going up to the cabin because uh, Mia is a drug addict. Yep. So they're trying to get her to go cold turkey and um, hopefully get her life in order. Yeah, so that kind of... I mean, like, that, that kind of is a big plot point because what it means is when Mia first encounters all of the, the evilness in the woods uh, after they find the Necronomicon and open it and read it, of course. Right. Um, after Naturally, you see a book, yeah, you read yeah, it. Yeah, that's important. Um, so when Mia encounters the evil in the woods, which is of course the tree scene because that's what happens in the original, uh, nobody believes her because they just think that she's like you know a crazy lady coming down off of her, right, right. her addiction. They think because she wants to leave, she just wants to get out of there so she can go and get more drugs, um, which is real clever. Now that you've laid that out, like that's a very very clever. Yeah, thing. this movie in a lot of ways is much smarter mm. than the original. So, anyways, yeah, like I was just saying, Mia is the first person infected yeah. uh, with the whole Deadite Plague thing. Let me ask you a question, though, then we can get back. What type of tree do you think it is that does what that tree does? Uh, it sinks its roots and twigs into you. What kind of tree? Uh, I... Say it on three. Ready? One, two, Elm. three. Oh, we Weeping Willow. Weeping Willow. I could see that. That makes, it, that makes sense. Because yeah. it'll make you weep. Yeah. So... So anyhow, um, like Sam said... <laughs> I don't like that conversation. <laughs> the, uh. You know, so she's the first person to get infected now. At first, you know, uh, her friends and her brother... Uh, her brother's the only one who's like, listen guys, she wants to go home, I'm going to bring her home. While her friend, their friends, are very adamant, like, listen, we've tried this before, she's done the same speech, the same oath, the same everything before, and she always backs out, like, we cannot feed into this. Yeah, and she OD'd last time, so... So, like, there's a very real fear that she won't make it if this, you know, behavior continues. Now, uh, obviously, as the plot goes on, she's not the only one who sees these, you know, uh, this, this incarnation of evil, right? It spreads from person to person and gets bigger and bigger as the movie goes on. Yeah, not physically bigger, but it starts to, like, possess people. Right, right, so, right. The, the scope of, of of the evil is much larger. Yeah, yeah. So it starts to possess people, and the cast starts dying uh, one at a time until they realize that what's actually going on is, like, some otherworldly evil and not just their friends, like, going insane. insane yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, right on cue with the original, they lock Mia in the basement. Yeah, uh, where she belongs. Stay down there, you dirty 
dirty drug addict. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, there's only two of the people left: the brother and the dumbass who read the. Yeah, yeah. Home. Who's like a history, you know, hipster teacher. Yeah, he's a history teacher. I want to be a history teacher. No Necronomicon. Though. What What I think, though, um, you know, in contrast, don't get me wrong, the original was totally very bloody, you know, and it was a, you know, NC-17 originally for the rating. This This one now is rated R. Um, and they could have, I'm sure, got the NC-17 if they continued with some of the stuff they, they talked about. Yeah. Really. But, like, there, I feel like, is way more body horror in this movie than the original one they do. Well, like, it's much more well done, right? Well, but, like, they up, they up the amount of blood. They up the amount of, like, yeah. how squeamish can we make you by, with, with cuts and such. Yeah, uh, on a few separate, on a few occasions in this one, they have arms being cut off instead mm -hmm. of just one. They have, um, it literally rain blood, uh, you know, just like gore up the wild zoo, which is kind of an evil dead trademark, you know, yeah. it's gore for the sake of gore, even if it isn't necessarily scary, it's just like, boom, in your face. One thing though, I will say, like, obviously, so like, we talk like it ups the gore in your face factor, but like, in the original movie, right, they do the whole, um, you know, uh, the Necronomicon, right? A ancient Sumerian, right? The professor and how he used the cabin. Instead of placing that like in the middle of the film, they have hinted at, they put it at the beginning, which I thought was really cool, like a cool prelude, yeah. right? Into the story, right? Like, oh, here's what happened at this cabin first, and then goes into like Mia's story and the whole family and uh, dynamic and drug addiction. Yeah, so I thought that was very smart of Fidi Alvarez to, to go with like, oh, here's that professor, here's what happened when he read the book. You know? Yeah, it was clever for sure. Uh, I, I also liked that. But uh, So anyways, eventually they find a way to cure Mia, but in that time the history teacher dude dies. The brother gets shot once, he's still alive. Uh, and then, like an idiot, the brother character goes back into the house, gets killed by the teacher who's now turned, yep. uh, and Mia comes back as uh, she, you know, she's alive now. Regular right? human Mia, yeah. So what they do she's is they take, Mia. yeah, they <laughs> take a character who traditionally in the storyline is, you know, uh, evil, right? She's she gets possessed and she's like the first bad guy. They take her and they make her the final girl. Oh, okay. You know, they, they take her from being. Um, you know, the first victim to being the, the hero, the, the person who saves, well, doesn't save the day, but defeats evil. Right, for that moment. Yeah. Um, so ultimately, instead of the brother getting the weapon, she gets the chainsaw. Yeah, uh, which is, like, way less cool than when Ash puts on the chainsaw. Yeah, because she doesn't put it on her arm. Yeah, yeah, we won't talk about that. We'll let you watch it for yourself, but the... The fact, like Sam said, when she final girls it, right, and like how the demons emerge, right, like everyone else is dead now, so they just have to send their own hell spawn up to like combat her, right? Like that whole last like 10, 15 minutes is very, very, very good. You're on the edge of your seat, especially the scene um, where they show her crawling through that like little hole, yeah, right, where her dog Grandpa was hiding out, like that he was. Yeah, R.I.P. Great rest in power, Grandpa. More spoilers, you know. But like that whole scene was very, very thrilling. You felt very claustrophobic while you were watching it. Yeah. Um. So I guess basically this movie just does a good job building on the tropes established in the original. Yeah. Uh, and it has fun by making like a dramatic, like 180 twist on uh, what the previous film. Uh, had done. So, like you're saying, like though this film, while it does pay homage and right follows a similar construct to the original, do you think like it definitely, you know, uh, improves and adds on some really good things? Yeah. Um, so definite, definitely with the ideas that they go about, and not that the acting was amazing in the first one because right. it wasn't. Uh, so like the acting's a little better. It's not great, mm -hmm. but the storyline. Uh, is it's like better established yeah. in its own world. It's more of a fluid like... It's more fluid, uh, the twist is really good and uh, you don't really see it coming until it happens. Um, 
it, it just makes sense. It's it's a good film, uh, and yeah. It, Halloween's coming around the corner, um, so definitely keep Evil Dead 2013 on your mind. Pick it up, Amazon, eBay, whatever. It's a good one to have, uh, especially. And if you're a fan of the originals, make sure you have those as well. Something to compare to. Um, you know, there are a lot of indoor days, so if you want something spooky, make you question what's out there, give it a watch. Yeah, Evil Dead, good time. We'll see you next time. This has been The Wealth Review.